My name's Carl Urban, and I play the character of Aoma in the Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. Aoma is the chief rider of the Riders of Rohan. He's the nephew to King Theoden, uh, who is the king of Rohan. Um, it is his job, essentially, to protect the borders of Rohan and to keep it safe from marauding orcs, and uh, he's essentially like a, a sheriff. I think that if you were to put his job description down uh, on paper, it would be orc killer. It was a fun character to play. I spent a lot of time learning how to ride a horse uh, because the character spends no extent of time on a horseback. So I mean, I trained for two months, five days a week to get to the point where I felt that the character needed to be, uh, to the point where I could just sort of, like ride the horse, with neck around the horse, and you know, uh, fight with a spear or a sword. Uh, you know, hit marks. Uh, it was a great element. I really enjoyed it. We had the benefit of working in a, such a unique environment and with such extraordinarily gifted actors. You know, we were often shooting on location. 90% of this film was shot on location in New Zealand. You may be able to regenerate how that looks to a certain extent on computer with today's modern technology, but you'll never recapture how that feels for an actor to be standing uh, on the set of, of Edoras, uh, on top of Mount Sunday in this primal glacial valley with parallel mountains running down either side of it and you're staring out into the plains and you're not looking at the plains of Canterbury, you are looking at Rohan. And uh, I think that's, that's an aesthetic that makes uh, the trilogy uh, somewhat different and, and it gives it more depth than the average film that's made these days with the computer technology. You know? If you can imagine this, you're an actor and you're standing in the midst of a, this a beautiful glacial valley and you have to do your work and you have to pretend that you are in the, in the country of Rohan as opposed to an actor who's standing on a sound stage in front of a green screen or a blue screen and you have to do all the work yourself in your imagination. The leap of imagination was you know, a lot less. It was all there for you. you know, all the elements were there. I got to see more of New Zealand, my home country, shooting Lord of the Rings for eight months than I had living there my entire life. If the production wanted to shoot in a remote location, they would go to the extent of actually building a road to drive everybody to that location or alternatively flying everybody in. Uh, or helicoptering in. Quite often they would uh, drop the cast on, on the top of a side of a mountain then fly off again and film them climbing the mountain. Uh, it was extraordinary, you know. I mean, you know, I remember some days going to work and getting up, hop, hopping into a small Cessna plane, flying over uh, the beautiful uh, Lake Wanaka at Queenstown and landing on some small little uh, paddock on the far side of Wanaka and then shooting in the majestic bush all day. And, uh, you know, I, I just got to see so much more of my country. And it was funnily enough because, um, you know, uh, I'm into a bit of fishing and uh, uh, Viggo Mortensen had been shooting Lord of the Rings down in the South Island for uh, quite, a, quite a long period before I, I came onto the scene. And he was actually giving me fishing tips on where to go. And he said, oh, you should try this spot over here. This is really, you know, this is a really great little place. And, and uh, so, you know, it was almost like consequently that the, uh, you know, the overseas uh, actors and people were actually showing me elements and aspects about my country which I didn't even know existed. I, I think that's what makes it uh, totally appealing for any filmmakers that are going to come to New Zealand is that you can relocate your crew and within a short space of time have a totally different geographical backdrop for your film. I have nothing but total admiration and respect for Peter Jackson uh, for bringing the Lord of the Rings trilogy, uh, his adaptation, anyway, to New Zealand. Uh, I saw direct economic benefit for a lot of small little towns and regions throughout New Zealand that we shot. Uh, for example, we shot um, a, uh, the final climactic sequence in the third film, the Battle of, of Mordor. We shot it on the volcanic plateau. and. Uh, we were all based in this little town called Oakuni, which had been blighted by bad ski seasons and uh, eruptions for several years. And it was just so lovely to see the entire production based in Oakuni. And uh, uh, there was no vacancies at any of the hotels. Uh, you know, the burger bar was closed. They had a sign saying sold out of food. 
you know, and it was lovely. And I sort of really feel like the morale of the country as a whole was really lifted. Um, from these little places like Twizel and Cromwell and Oakuni. And, uh, you know, again, I have nothing but total admiration and respect for, for Peter for choosing to, uh, you know, shoot this in his home country and, uh, and to not sort of abscond off to some, you know, other location. And, uh, you know, he had a lot of uh, faith in, in New Zealand as a whole and in, uh, in the talent and expertise of the, the crew and, uh, and actors. And uh, it was an amazing experience. A lot of the filming for the Lord of the Rings trilogy took part in the South Island, and uh, when we were shooting there, we were based uh, a lot of the time in Queenstown, which is this sort of resort town, uh, which is uh, amazingly catered for the tourists and, and travellers. Uh, you know, it's all situated on, on the edge of Lake Wanaka and uh, is literally half an hour's drive away from uh, some amazing ski fields like Coronet Peak and the Remarkables. Uh, you know, if you're coming to New Zealand, uh, there's a lot to do, and Queenstown really caters for uh, the tourist and the traveller. Uh, you can go on the shot over jet, uh, you can bungee jump, uh, you know, you can go skiing, uh, or even just play golf or fishing, you know, and uh, it was really lovely to be based in Queenstown, so if we did have time off, which wasn't that often, but when we did, there was always plenty to do, you know. During, during shooting, um, the uh, cast and crew were based uh, some of the time in um, a little town called Cromwell, which was at the base of, the, uh, of a major dam. And it's really like a sort of 1800s gold mining town with, uh, you know, quaint wooden, old wooden hotels. And, um, uh, you know, we, uh, I remember at one point the uh, second unit uh, decided to throw a party and they literally clo closed off the street in Cromwell, which is the one street, and threw this spectacular party all night and there's sort of people going from hotel to hotel just right across the road from each other and there were fireworks and it was, you know, it was, you know a really festive time. I think it was really important for the, for the cast and crew to find that downtime, to find that release because, you know, when you're working so hard for such a long period of time, it's really important to keep your morale up. And, uh, you know, all credit to the producers, to Barry Osborne and Mark Ordesky, they did a phenomenal job of uh, keeping the crew's morale up by, you know, throwing parties. Um, I remember one day we were out in the middle of nowhere and uh, it had been a particularly difficult sequence and tough weather and all of a sudden, uh, you know, plates of crayfish turn up. And, uh, uh, and, and Barry Osborne brought in this uh, local uh, Irish singer, and uh, so he was playing to the cast and crew at lunchtime. You know, little sort of little things like that that really sort of you know helped you know get us through it. Because you know near the end of the shoot, we were shooting six day weeks, you know, often sometimes 16 hours a day, and uh, you know that can get quite relentless and quite grueling. <clears throat> on Lord of the Rings we had a motto and that was adapt and overcome it was quite often we were shooting in some of the most arduous and trying circumstances uh, snow, rain 140 km hour winds uh, and we were in you know, really rough and rugged isolated country and you know, away from the sort of creature comforts that one's accustomed to um, you know, and I think by and large everybody was you know, really uh, up for it you know, it didn't matter how difficult it got. If you were to ask someone, you know, well, would you rather be somewhere else, the answer would be no. You know, this is exactly what everybody wanted to do at that particular point in time, and it didn't matter how, how bad it got, how rough it got. You know, everyone was really committed to uh, bringing the uh, vision of, of Tolkien to life, you know, and doing justice to it. If I was to visit New Zealand or if I was to recommend what to do for a, a tourist or a traveller when they're coming to New Zealand, if they have the time, I would say hire a car and drive around the country, you know, top to bottom, 
go and explore it. Go and see it. The people are friendly. There's a multitude of you know lovely bed and breakfasts and hotels to stay at. Uh, activities to do, whatever you're into. There's golf, fishing, uh, surfing, uh, bungee jumping, skiing. Uh, you know, we've got it all. And uh, if you don't have much time, then I would recommend probably going to Queenstown because it's specifically uh, designed and, and set up to cater for the tourists, for, for all the individual needs and, and wants. And um, there's fantastic shopping there. And you're situated right on Lake Wanaka. And if you want to just sit there and, and take in, you know, the beautiful mountains and, and, and lake, then you can do that. And if you want to go skiing or jet boating or bungee jumping, well, you can do that. Uh, so that would be my pick. Uh, I would also recommend checking out the far north. Uh, you know, going right to the top of the North Island and standing on the very tip at Cape Reinga and looking out and seeing the Pacific Ocean and the Tasman collide, and that's truly an awesome sight. Watching two seas collide, you know, where else in the world can you do that? We were shooting down in, uh, in the location of Edoras at Mount Sunday in this you know, beautiful glacial valley, and we'd been shooting there for about a week. And uh, we turn up one day, and where before there had been beautiful tussocky plains was suddenly covered in snow. And uh, we were shooting in, in continuity, and, uh, you know, I thought... I'm like, you know, this was, you know, how was how we were going to get around this? This was a disaster. And, you know, Peter Jackson, to his credit, said, OK, well, we'll set the camera up here. Our first shot's going to be uh, looking this way. And then we're going to melt the snow. And uh, then we'll shoot that there. And I'm like, melt the snow? But, you know, literally half an hour later, there's 30 guys standing outside, uh, you know, in the plains with these big industrial heaters melting the snow. And, you know, they melted the snow within the vicinity, and then we continued shooting. And it, that sort of brings me right back to the motto, adapt and overcome. And, you know, I think because Peter was so unflappable, so calm, uh, you know, and, and his attitude and sort of uh, relaxed demeanor really, I think, permeated the set. And, uh, you know, he guided that ship, and he did an extraordinary job. And I'd imagine there would have been very little respite for him, uh, you know, simultaneously directing three films at once. You know, every day sitting there and there'd be seven monitors in front of him. And not only would he be directing the unit in front of him, but also receiving satellite footage from two or three units within the vicinity. And you could go to him and you could ask him a question and he would be, you know, he could give you a specific answer. Uh, more often than not, he was uh, good-natured and good-humoured. Uh, you know, uh, I think that he is uh, a consummate director. He's a director who has a complete command of his craft. And uh, I feel very privileged and very fortunate to, to have worked with him. Um, they don't come better.